In this tutorial, we're going to look at a website that makes it really pretty easy to create your own Jeopardy style quiz games. And the name of the website is Factile. The address, as you can see here in the upper left corner, is playfactile.com. Now this website would be great to use for fun with your family and friends, but it's really meant to be used by teachers and students in the classroom. As you can see down here, it says, Factile is a free learning platform that lets teachers create engaging Jeopardy style quiz games for the classroom. So let's take a look at how you could use this. First, you would need to obviously go to playfactile.com and click login. If you don't already have an account with Factile, you'll need to click sign up, put in an email and password, and sign up. Once you've signed up, you'll get a welcome message here and a button to create your first game. So I'll click that. Now to create your first game, you start by simply putting in the name of your game. And notice that whatever you put here, it will become the URL for your game. Automatically it's going to have www.playfactile.com forward slash, but then whatever you type next, that will be the name of your game. And the topic for my Jeopardy game or Factile game is going to be Spanish animals, the animal words in Spanish. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the animals, and I click save and continue. But notice the URL is already taken. This is going to happen to you a lot as you use Factile because lots of other teachers out there are already using it. A lot of the names are already taken. So I'm just going to add a couple of letters or numbers at the end of my title. Click Save and Continue. Let's see if that one works. Looks like it worked that time. And now it takes me to the screen that I'm going to use to play this game with my students. This is the Jeopardy board. And editing it is super easy. It's as simple as clicking and typing. So type Factile title here. Here I can just type in Los Animales and I won't need to put in the numbers 1, 2, 3 at the end. The reason why is because the title that we put in on the previous screen, that one has to be unique because it helps to determine the URL for the game. The title here doesn't. This could be anything and if it's a duplicate of somebody else's game title, that's okay. So next I need to go in and put in some category titles. So I'll put Mammals here reptiles, and of course I could put these in Spanish, that would probably be better, amphibians, birds, fish, and finally I'll just put in miscellaneous. So that's going to be my Jeopardy board. Next comes the hard work. It's not difficult, but this is definitely going to be time consuming. I need to click on each of these dollar amounts, and I need to put in a question and the correct answer. So this is where you're going to put in some time in order to make this engaging activity for your students to play. So my first question is, how do you say mouse in Spanish? And here I'll put the answer. I type that in and click save. Now before I click save, I wish I could put in a picture. Why not just put a picture of a mouse and then the answer is in Spanish here. Well look, there is an option to click and upload a photo. And I've tried this and it'll let you do it. I've been able to upload a photo and have it appear here and have it appear in my finished game. However, notice what it says, upgrade to pro. This really is meant to be a pro feature. So if you want to add photos, if you want to add videos, if you want to be able to use equation symbols for math, you really should upgrade to Pro. Like I said, I've tried it and it seemed to work with pictures without upgrading to Pro, but that might just be on a trial basis, I'm not sure. So in this case, I'm happy with what I have. I'll click Save and it takes me back to my board. Notice that now, because I put a question and answer in for the 100 point question for mammals, it's in yellow now, it's ready to go. And I can just repeat that process, typing in my next question, typing in the correct answer, clicking Save. When you're done filling up this board with questions and answers, notice down here toward the bottom of the screen, it says Final Factile. This is like Final Jeopardy. So you put in that final question that they'll be able to wager on. How confident are they that they'll be able to get the answer right? Again, you just put in your question, put in the right answer, click Save, and now Final Factile comes in in yellow. Notice across the bottom of the screen we have some controls. We can print, but printing is restricted to the Pro version only. You can delete your whole game and start over from scratch. You can share your game. When you click share, it gives you the link to your game that you can copy and then post to your website or email it out to people. There's also a couple other ways you can share. There's also a button for flashcards. Again, this is a pro feature that you'd have to upgrade in order to get. And then finally, in the lower right corner, we have the play game button that you can click to load up your game. So give me a few minutes to fill in some questions and answers, and then we'll continue the video. 
All right, I've got it done. I'm ready to play this with my students. I simply go in and click Play Game. That will load up the welcome screen for my game. I click Play Now. Now, it's important at this point to put your class into four groups, into four teams. Now, you could use three teams or two, whatever you want to do, but I'm going to choose four. And then each team needs to choose a team captain. And that team captain is represented by one of these lovely characters here. So let's say team one chooses onion, team two chooses eggplant, and then we have celery and broccoli. Next, you simply click start game. Now this is the teacher clicking, typically. You could have the students working on their own devices, but typically you would have the teacher at the front of the room with their computer hooked up to a projector that's showing on a screen at the front of the room, and then you click start game. The game appears, and you start playing. Now at this point, you would need to decide how are you gonna do this? Are you gonna have the teams take turns so that team one gets the first chance to answer the question correctly? If they get it wrong, maybe team two has a chance? That's one way to do it, but I feel like this website works best if you have buzzers, okay? And so here are a couple of buzzer systems that I have some experience with. This is the one that I use. It's learning resources, lights and sounds buzzers. And I will put a link to this in the video description below. If you're interested, you could click the link and find out more about it. But these are very affordable buzzers that are durable and pretty sturdy, and they work well. And basically, each of the four teams would get one of these buzzers. Each buzzer has a different sound that's unique to that buzzer. And also, these particular buzzers have colors that light up when the buzzer is pressed. And so if you pay close attention, you should be able to hear and see which of the four groups buzzes in first. I know there are more expensive buzzer systems, lockout buzzers and things like that, and I'll also put links to those options as well. But I just wanted you to know what I use. This is a very inexpensive way to have a buzzer system to use with your Jeopardy games and other games too. If you feel like you don't need lights and you just need sounds, here's another option also from Learning Resources, and I'll put a link to this as well in the description below. Okay, so imagine each of the groups with a buzzer. The students take turns being the person from their group that comes up to the buzzer. And then let's say team one starts and chooses a category. So mammals for 100. The teacher clicks. How do you say mouse in Spanish? The student who taps the buzzer first gets the chance to answer the question. So let's say the celery group buzzes in first and they get it right. I can just click the check mark. El Raton, the answer appears on the screen, and look, the Silvery Group just got $100 worth of points. Now I click Continue, it takes me back to the board, and we can move on to the second question. Now, if a group gets a question wrong, you just click the X, and they lose points. Now, because they got it wrong, another team could buzz in and try to get it right. Let's say this last team gets it right, they can get those points. And so you can keep going until one of the teams gets the right answer. Then click continue, and again, you're back to the board. So that really is all you need to know about how to create and play a Factile game. You may have noticed here in the upper right corner, there is a full screen button that maximizes it, makes it look a little bit nicer, so that's good to know about. And also, if you click back here in the upper left, you will exit the game. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'll click here in the upper left where it says My Games. This is where you can go to see all of the games that you've created and you can get back in to edit games. And also, this is where you would go to play the game. Let's say next week or next month when you wanna play the game, you go back to your games and then click play. Also notice here at the right, there are some public games that you can look through. Science games, history games, made by teachers across the world and they've made them public and you can go ahead and click on them and play them. So I really like Factile. Yes, some of the features are limited for paying customers, but I'm okay with that. And hopefully they'll keep free what is free today. If they do, I'm going to keep using this with my students. I think it's a great, fun way to review for tests and quizzes and to practice content with my students. I hope you enjoy using Factile. Thanks for watching this video, and please consider connecting with me on some of my social media websites like Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And please do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And watch for a new video from me at least every Monday.